We have had some submissions. I, I have to say it's definitely been the most popular interactive drawing session concept we've had so far. I think once I sort of open the floodgates to um, uh, free pet portraits, um, people will happily walk through that door. So we've got lots of pets to work through today. Um, and yeah, keen to get started. I, I hope um, we'll be able to sort of do justice to people's little, little friends. So keen to get going. So I thought what I'd just start with is just to do sort of a, a, a very, very quick crash course on um, uh, uh, how to draw uh, cats and dogs, really. And um, as, and as the, you do, I'll just I'll just start talking and then you guys let me know if you can hear me. You should be able to hear me now. Sorry about that. <laughs> all good. All good. Um, yeah, so the central concept I thought I'd just really quickly go over is the idea that sort of if you could draw people, it really helps your, your cat and dog drawing because we're all evolved from the, the same central species. So um, lots of the central parts are there. So you can see on my screen here, I've got a really rough skeleton that I've sketched up and I've got a, a, a rough dog skeleton over here. And if you have a look, sort of the, uh, uh, we've got a rib cage, we've got scapulars, we've got um, a humerus bone, we've got, um, uh, I'm gonna forget the name of the, the ulna is one of them, can't remember what the other one's called, but everything's kind of in the same place, but just sort of reorganized in a slightly different way. Um, and that's really, um, it, it's good to have just like a really, basic understanding of a little bit of dog anatomy because the whole process of drawing different kinds of dogs is sort of just uh, maybe stretching the spine out a little bit, making the legs a little longer. You're just kind of moving around those central building blocks that you've got. So if you can draw a, uh, a person or a bit of a skeleton, that's going to really help sort of uh, um, the way that you can manipulate a, um, a dog figure. So I've got this sort of very standardized dog there, but if I took a little uh, acorn figure and did an x-ray on him. Um, all the same kind of elements are going to be there. It's going to be a skull with a spine that goes down the back. There's sort of a, a, a barrel chest where the um, where the, the, the ribs are. Right. And we've got um, a hip bone kind of coming down here, the pelvis, and then the, the bones. And the trick with dogs is that they're, they've got, if you imagine that there's the top part of your arm and the lower part of your arm, all the bottom part of their leg and their feet, it's all toes. They've just got these really elongated toes, like a, like a foot's been stretched out. So it's good to sort of keep some of those little bits in mind. So that's a, a quick kind of sort of technical overview that I thought I'd get, give you, but cool. let's get to some pet drawing. I like that. We're just all like elongated dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. much. We're just sort of stretched out. And I think there's a lot of things about humans that don't work super well because, um, because the, the, the dog's kind of like Mac one version of being sort of a quadruped and bipedal is, is not, I mean, I suppose you could say it's natural, but it's, it's it, our whole skeleton is trying to sort of readjust to make it work that we stand upright. So I think humans get a lot more sort of back problems and have more difficulties giving birth and things like that, because we kind of messed the whole system up by standing up straight. Okay. So I'm um, going to get a nice fresh layer in Photoshop. And um, because we had so many submissions, um, I thought we will just basically do it. I'll, I'll get through as many as I can today, but we're essentially going to do it uh, as sort of uh, first in the door. So I'm just doing them entirely sequentially as I received them. And also it's worth yeah. noting that we will be back on Thursday. So we're doing another session at 12 on Thursday. So if I don't get to you today, your pet will hopefully get around to it on Thursday. And as, as we chat about that, feel free to submit. Um, I think Bill's done a call out on his, his Instagram, um, yep. but we've also done a call out for Discord. So if you're, if you're listening to this, you can jump into our Discord um, group, throw it in there. And if we don't get through them all and this session's like super fun and we want to do it again, we might do it down the track as well. So feel free to, it's not too late to submit. So throw them in. Cool, cool. Okay, so the first submission that I got kind of blew my mind. This is from uh, Camilla and these are, her yard monkeys. We don't know what's going on here. I'm just gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say that these are her actual pets or monkeys that hang out in her yard. Um, I'm very impressed. So if you're in the chat, Camilla, let us know what's going on with the yard monkeys because they're fantastic. So uh, I'm just gonna start quickly knocking out one, one yard monkey here. So they've got these cute little faces, they've got a little nose in the middle. Um, let's give it a, a, a cute little smile on this guy. And they've got these fantastic fluffy ears coming out the top. Um, and he's kind of clinging onto that tree with his little 
monkey paw hands. So I'm just using a, a nice rough inky brush that I like to use. Um, he's hanging up in the tree there and then we've got that fantastic long tail coming down. And we've got some sort of stripy action going on in the tail as well. How often does drawing monkeys come up? Uh, you know what, it does come up quite a bit actually, but the monkeys are, are just so varied in how they look. I can't right. tell you that I've, that I've really perfected one kind of one kind of monkey. I mean, and the, they, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you're sort of, uh, again, sort of taking a, a human form and warping it certain amounts. It's sort of like, half possum half human and to varying degrees they're more more or less human so sort of like orangutans look surprisingly like people and apes obviously but something like this is much more on sort of the uh the the, 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 the possum end of things anyway okay camilla that's uh first drawing out of the way we've got our yard monkey there <laughs> so um I have to say later on, it does become slightly more sort of cats and dogs focused, but we've got a few interesting ones uh, that came through. Um, uh, Kendall sent through uh, a couple of her quails here. So I'm gonna try and uh, draw a bit of a quail. It's quite a compact looking um, bird, this one. Yeah. Tell me everything you know about quails, Flynn. Um, is it okay to say that the, the eggs are really nice to eat? I, I did get okay? another photo that she sent through of some 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 quail eggs, and um, um, they they did look very nice. They were sort of little blue speckled ones, but um, I don't know if I've actually ever tried a quail egg before. The um I, I didn't realize they were so cute. They're pretty cute. Yeah, they're they're, they're sort of um um yeah, sort of very compact looking, almost chicken chicken like things. Yeah. My, my only connection to quails is that my my when we were kids, my parents were trying to encourage us to start cooking for ourselves. So they decided they would get each of us to um, cook a meal for the family as our first sort of um, attempt at cooking. And my brother was extremely ambitious and decided his first meal he'd ever cook would be um, um, roast quails wrapped in vine leaves and bacon. Um, wow which I remember being a total success. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sure quails have lots of other great features, but they're also quite delicious. <laughs> um, so Steve sent in uh, a Squeak the Wonder Cat was what it was named. Um, I have to say, it looks like a very sophisticated cat for, for being called uh, being called Squeak. <laughs> um, he looks quite noble and regal here. I'm sure he's got a, a silly side to him as well. Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say maybe this is Steve Kosaboom. I, I don't know, but there, there's a, uh, yeah. a, a, yeah. a regular it is, it is. viewer of the show, Steve. That's right. Yeah. Um, cats are not really my forte, but I'm going to give it the, the, the best go I can here. Something about they've got these very angular, angular faces. Mm. Um, and uh, I try and often inject a sort of imperious kind of look to, to cats that I'm drawing. Sorry, I, I, I should know this, Flynn. Uh, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but do you have any pets right now? I know you were a pet crazy growing up. Right now, I right now I don't. Well, my mum uh, was a vet. She's retired now, but um, oh, right. she's a veterinarian. So we've had, yeah, I've grown up with lots of animals, and um, particularly when she was younger and running her practice and everything, we had all sorts of animals around the house. Um, because it turns out, if you're a neighbourhood vet, if any animal within a 20 kilometer radius is injured and people know where you live, um, they'll awesome. bring it, they'll bring the injured animal straight to you, which is really lovely, obviously. Um, yeah. But we would get the knock on the door at two o'clock in the morning uh, that someone found a distressed pigeon, you oh, know? Um, <laughs> so we just kind of grew up with lots of animals, but the weirdest animals we ever had in our place uh, were sheep. So um, we would get sheep, which is weird because we live in the suburbs, but it, it would yeah. happen more often than not to bring it up. Um, but the coolest ones we ever got were fairy penguins. Oh my God, um, that's amazing. The reason for that yeah. is that they would often, um, so I grew up in Cronulla, like on the coast and certain times of year, the fairy penguins would sort of get a little bit lost or get kind of washed up. Um, oh wow, these were the wild surface. fairy penguins. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I, I don't know where they come from or the migrating patterns or anything like that, but it just happened regularly enough that there'd be yeah. fairy penguins hanging out in the bath and we'd have to keep them away from the dogs and 
all that sort of stuff. That's awesome. All right, so I've done Steve's cat here, and it it had a, a on, on the photo, it had a, a a little bit of fabric around its neck here, and I'm assuming that was a cape, based on the Steve the um, uh, Squeak the Wonder Cat. So that's where he's ended up. And uh, Steve's in Steve's in chat, and he said, "Yay, Squeak!" Um, Fantastic. Yeah, so... <laughs> Good to hear from you, Steve. Um, uh, the next one I was very impressed with. So this is from Kim, who sent this to me on Instagram, okay. and this is the incredibly classy Evie. Um, I can't tell what Evie's quite dressed up as. I, I believe Evie is a ch chihuahua. And um, uh, I'm getting a mix between sort of like a 1960s air hostess and... Um, That's what I was thinking uh, as well, but the patch... Yeah, it looks almost, almost like, like a military. classy Russian spy sort of subterfuge kind of chihuahua. Yeah. Um, so I've got these big black eyes. Chihuahuas would be good at subterfuge. Well, they're very small and sneaky, I suppose. Got to get a little bit of that hat in because it's fantastic. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to check out Evie's page, I can't, I can't remember the, the exact handle, but I'm sure if you um, uh, look up uh, Evie Chihuahua, you will be able to find a number of fantastic costumes. Um, uh, I can't say we've, we've managed to get Acorn into any costumes yet. I don't know if we'll go that far, but I suspect it's only a matter of time. <laughs> we were chatting a little bit um, before the stream started, um, just as a joke that I heard years ago that I still think is pretty true. It's like, I'd, I'd love to adopt a pet. Um, I have a pet, but I just don't have time to manage their Instagram account. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it definitely does feel a little bit like that. Um, yeah, yeah. One of those things, if you don't take a thousand photos of them, then it doesn't exist. Yeah, but yeah. definitely yeah. see a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to Bill's uh, Instagram account. Once you get to the point, you're like, Acorn's just going to need his own, his own follow account and everything. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll happen. Um, I mean, it snowed the other day in the mountains and it was like everyone just had to run outside with their cameras straight away to get their, um, get their, their puppy in the snow shot. And I'm happy to say I got uh, yes. really, really quality ones. Right. Um, all right, this is a submission from uh, Leo and Leo is actually a, another mountains local who is recently started working in the gallery that we've got in town. So um, Leo has been um, minding uh, the little fish art space and is doing a fantastic job. Um, so I will try and um, got these fantastic fluffy ears on, on Leo's dog here. Um, I think he's turning very much into a koala, but I'll try and pull it back from the koala <laughs> brink. Um, border collies are my favorite, absolute favorite they're, dog. They're very sweet. I, I was quite keen on getting a border collie. Um. <laughs> he's definitely looking a bit koala-ish, but that's okay. He's got a bit of a sneaky look, this one. We've got those big, nice shaggy. All right, I'm going to have to get some, some dogs in action here. They're all feeling a bit static. So the one thing I, I, was, I was thinking about sort of... Um, drawing dogs and, and, and one of the, the great things about them is that they're so expressive with their, their motion. They kind of, um, I guess they don't really have any filter. So you, you can quite easily tell sort of what they're, what they're feeling a lot of the time. And even though I, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm a particularly good sort of draw, accurate drawer of dogs, I, I really like trying to get some, some, some feeling into them. So let's see what we can do with the next one. Okie dokie. Moving on, we've got uh, the lovely uh, Charlie, who was sent to us from, from Nicole. Um, it's a fantastic photo here of Charlie. Um, so I think I might try and get him, um, I think the phrase I like to use is gambling. Do you have a gamble, Flynn? Gambling, no. No, I'm not, I don't have the gambling thing. Okay. Mostly because I'm terrible at it. No, sorry, not gambling like, like cards gambling. You know how you can, uh, it's spelt differently, gamble. Like, uh, like it's a kind of like joyful running to gamble. Oh, okay. No, I totally thought you meant betting on money and losing money. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, it's, it's going to take it down a different path there. Yeah. Um, um, but the answer remains the same. It is also no. Okay. I don't know. I don't know because I don't know what that is. Uh, but I, I think, suspect I think not. To, to, to run in a very happy way. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's puppies do it. It's sort right. of a, a puppy run is to, to, to gamble. Okay. Do you do you gamble? 
I have gambled. Um, um, uh, I, I think um, as having a puppy around, I've probably um, gambled a, a little bit more. For anybody just dropping in, we're, we're not talking about gambling. This is too confusing. I'm going to move on. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and get uh, young Charlie here in sort of um, full flight. He's going to end up a bit cartoony, but he's a nice shaggy dog. Just if check in doubt, I was just going to say, just check, just checking with chat. Uh, Misty's um, dropped her um, Husky's Instagram um, account and uh, says, "I don't even have an Instagram, but my dog does." You're right. Fair enough. Yeah. There you go. All right. So we've got Charlie here in full gallop. Full gallop. Okay. How are we doing for time? Twenty minutes in, and we've got six pets. Okay. I don't know if I'll try and pick up the pace too much more. I think I'll just keep working through. You're going through and, them, like, really fast. Um, Very impressive. Thank you. Thank Did you. Did you – I may have missed it because um, it was due to uh, – I was fixing my mic, but with um, with Squeak the Wonder Cat, the cape – was the cape had added in because the, the file was named Squeak the Wonder Cat? The file was called Squeak the Wonder Cat, and yeah. he had, like, what looked like a little bit of fabric tied around his neck in the photo. Yeah. So – I couldn't see a cape, but I'm 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 going to assume. That. I think it's a fair bet that was one. Very there. cool. I'm sure Steve is very happy with that one. Cool. Um, so this next one is a little kitten called Puppy, which is owned by uh, some friends, Rowan and Anna, of mine. <laughs> um, and I think they just enjoy infuriating the toddlers that live next door to them, who are just so confused about why the cat's called Puppy. Um, <laughs> um, but it's a very sweet-looking little cat. Um, so I'm going to try and sort of draw in a bit of the the the, the motion of the, the cat now. So I'm just sort of um, getting some rough lines in for the, the shape. And I'm going to have one of those big, long, fluffy tails coming out the back. What's this um, brush you're using? Uh, this brush is a ink brush, um, which is from the... Um, Oh, for the first time ever, I'm going to forget his name. Who am I talking about, Flynn? You're talking um, about Carl T. Webster. I'm, I'm talking sure. about Carl T. Webster, of course I am. Uh, yeah, so this is from his Mega Pack, which you can go to the tab in your brushes. If you haven't done this, it's going to change your life. Um, oh, no, I've forgotten where it is. Brushes. If you go down here, there's a little tab called Get More Brushes, and then there is a free library of the most amazing brushes. Um, so if you're a Photoshop user and you haven't tried that, get on it. It's fantastic. Nice. Um, all right, it's got a cute little face. Kind of like children with pets. If you're trying to make them um, very cute, it's kind of like you move all the features of the face down towards the bottom, and then they've got these big craniums. And it's kind of, there's something about sort of children and, and young animals that, um, if they've got a really big head, it just, you kind of just, your brain just reads that as sort of like cute young thing. Oh, really? Um, I never noticed that before. Yeah, I think it's because babies just have big heads. Yeah, um, and so their, their skull is kind of disproportionate for the rest of their body. And I guess because we're sort of naturally wired to think babies are cute. Mm. Um, just anything with a sort of bigger than usual or disproportionate cranium kind of reads as, as, uh, as a cute thing. Yeah. All right. Um, and he's got those little cute. Uh, socks. I like I like the right paw there. The little, the little curled up. Little curl on it. Yeah. Very yeah. gambling um, pose. <laughs> All right. Cool. I've got another cat that looks surprisingly similar, but in a in a in a much more chill pose. This is a. I feel like this is a cat that's just dropped a. 90s rap album or something like that um <laughs> i was thinking i was thinking more this is like the front of a magazine kind of situation yeah. especially with the bag in the background yeah <laughs> yeah this is a very very um chill and chic cat yeah this one. loves the camera yes very For much sure. so so this is uh this is from foos who sent this through um another thing with cats is a bit of a cheat for cats is they have these kind of like well, I mean, people call them cat eyes, where the 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 the, the tips of the, the the eyes are slightly higher, and the central point of the eye is slightly lower. And if you kind of just draw those in as line, that kind of reads as cat eyes a little bit. 
So I'm just going to give him a, a, a cheeky little smile, this one. Put some nice pointy ears on. Um, and I'll go for a, um, a similar but slightly different pose on this one. <laughs> so this is quite um, in interesting, like how, like you've got the pose, I thought you'd kind of be drawing the pose verbatim, but you're kind of moving things around like quite a bit, like using it as a reference, but kind of having quite a lot of freedom with um, like, I guess that the end, the end pose or where you want to put it. Yeah. That seems like quite a difficult thing to do, like in my mind. Um, um, I think it, I'm, I'm sort of trying to, I guess, trying to make it a little bit more interesting for myself. But also, yeah. if you're trying to copy a photo, you have to sort of keep keep to the terms of the photo. So in some ways, it's a bit easier if I sort of come up with my own shape and then it doesn't read as incorrect next to the photo. So right. in some ways, it's more challenging. And in some ways, it's lazy. <laughs> up, up to you, really, if you want to choose. Choose your own adventure. Right. Yeah. We've got these adorable uh, hounds that were sent through from, from Heather. Um, uh, who I believe, I'm, I'm going to guess it was Heather that came into, she bought a picture at the, the gallery the other day, but I'm not sure if I've got the right Heather. Right. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a challenge because I don't know if I've drawn dogs like this before, but uh, let me just see if I can sort of, with each sort of breed of dog, it's about sort of trying to nail a little bit of the, there's some sort of key to their character. So with these ones, it's, it's I'm going to guess it's sort of the, the snout and the slightly sort of sad droopy eyes on these ones. It's this sort of adorable droopy eye thing. And sort of giving you that sort of looking up at you, you look. So let me see if I can sketch that, that in. Is that you haven't fed me look? Yes. Yeah, immediately yeah, after they've yeah. been fed. I, I've loved you so much. Why would you wrong me like this? Why would you forsake me? Yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll get those big, big droopy sort of I don't know if these are basset hounds, but sort of basset hound kind of look to them. Yeah. Um, um, and I like that there's a pair of these guys, but um, I might just do a bit of cheaty duplication with them. And um, if you if you're watching the stream and and you want to add your pet in, I mentioned at the start, but I don't know what was going on with my mic, so maybe you didn't hear it. But you feel free to um, drop your pets into um, our Discord, or you can share it with Bill Hope directly on Instagram if you want to do it, see how we go, because we're going to be back on Thursday um, drawing more dogs and cats and monkeys and whatever you've got. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so if you have any just general in. questions, feel free to chuck them in the chat as well. And um, we'll do our best to respond. Um, I don't know. Think, how are you feeling about this one, Flynn? Is that looking kind <laughs> of like cool. a droopy, droopy basset hound? We've got the, that sort of worried, worried look up the top. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's, Giving that's the eyes. Enough. Yeah. It's all in the eyes. Okie dokie. Um, all right, what's the next one we've got? Uh, Chase. Chase sent through this very noble looking, it's a bit dark, this photo. Let me just brighten it up a little bit. Um, um, it's very noble looking hound. Um, Definitely guarding the property in that pose. Yes, Let, let's try and go for something similarly sort of epic. Um, okay, getting a little bit out of my comfort zone here. I'm trying to just sort of roughly knock out the shape of the skull of this dog. Um, and I've got these big, big broad chests and it's got that pose of the legs coming out. And we're sort of going for a bit of a lower angle here. So looking up, like yeah. up at the chin. Remember seeing this amazing, there's a there's a gallery in London called the Victorian Albert Museum. And it's just this, I think it's been organized in some way, but it's just sort of a giant sprawling collection of expensive stuff that the British have accumulated over the years. And one of my favorite things in there is a um, I think it's a granite sculpture of someone's noble dog, um, and it's a it's a two tone dog like this, and but two different colors of granite were used, and then each of the pieces of rock were perfectly combined together to make this giant sculpture of this guy's dog. Oh wow! Um, it's the most amazing sculpture, but you sort of, I guess I guess that's the 1860s version of a active Instagram account for your dog. Is it giant marble yeah, sculpture? Yeah, getting marble statues. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay, I have a little lead around here. What's the hardest thing about drawing dogs or cats or pick your pet? What's um, the hardest thing about it? I think the thing I struggle with is, well, what I'm struggling with right now is, is the the direction that the, um, what the legs are doing. I, I haven't really got the anatomy down of what the front legs are doing. And um, you can kind of tell when it's right and tell when it's wrong. And I, I don't think I'm doing it particularly well right now. But um, like, if you draw a dog from the side, got dog here, and the the legs kind of go down and then back forward, so kind right. of the opposite of human legs. But you have to kind of imagine that's like the um, the, the dog's kind of it's like it's like their elbow, those their arms forward, right? Um, and then it goes kind of forward again, and then the back legs go forward like a human leg and back, and then there's the foot there. Um, and I find getting the front legs, the anatomy of those correct, quite challenging. Right. So that, that's probably the, the trickiest thing I find. And just, just on that, Misty had a question from chat. How do you do the flappy jowls? The flappy jowls? Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I'm sort of having a, my, my own dog now. I'm, I'm slowly sort of getting a little bit of dog anatomy down. I think the main thing is that they've got sort of the, the nose at the front of their snout there. And then they've got, um, I'm just going to pull this out of nowhere, but I think it's called the penumbrum. Is this part of your mouth here? Okay, um, yep. Between your nose and your lips. Uh, yeah. Is that right? Or is penumbrum? It's either your penumbrum or your gabella. I don't know which one it is. But anyway, this part between your, your nose and your lips, and that's kind of divided on dogs. So that's where you get the line down. And that's basically their mouth. And on dog with big jowls, it's kind of like the top lip is just kind of hanging down. So you've got the top of the, the mouth there. And then the, the, that's kind of just like they're uh, got these big flaps of the, the, the big right. flap lips. So you, they just kind of just hang down underneath the mouth there. And that, that's kind of how I do it. Um, but whether that's correct or not, I'm not, not entirely sure. That's cool. I love know. that. I love, I love like how it, like, it's sort of quite mathematical it is, or like mathematical is not the right word, but... Um... There's like a process to it, how you compare it to like a human's lips and you're like, well, this is basically the same. Like this kind of sits yeah. here and then yeah. you change this. So there's not like this, I guess the similarities and differences, I guess figuring that out is like, seems to be quite an important part. And once you yeah. kind of nail that, you can kind of build, build on that. Like when you were using the examples of the, of the, of the legs, like, mm. yeah, well, it's kind of like a, you know, how a human elbow moves, but you know, kind of in the opposite way. And you know, with that part, whether we got the terminology right for the penum penumdrum. I looked it up and I, I was way off. Google actually told me there's no good matches for what you searched for. So I was... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could just be completely wrong. Um, uh... Methodological. Uh, Johanna's um, not logged in at the moment, but she told me methodological. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good, better word than, than maths. Yeah. Um, but... Uh... Yeah, I think I think with the, those, it's kind of one of the things I, I enjoy most about drawing is that to sort of draw something well, you kind of have to understand to a basic extent how it works. So drawing can be kind of like a investigative, investigative sort of system mm. for figuring out how how things work. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to uh, uh, Doug. I believe this is the the dog, not the, the person who submitted it. Um, let me just see. It's Doug from Harriet. Okay. Harriet sent in Doug. And I might so try Doug's and... the dog and Harriet's the owner. That's that's correct. Um, I might try and turn Doug into a um, another kind of um, classic dog pose because he's got that fantastic waggy tail. Looks like he's about to take off. Mm. Um, in the picture. So let me just... It's like um, Thor's hammer, but just the dog tail <laughs> He's just a helicopter in front of there, yeah. <laughs> um, which is the, 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 the back raised with the, the, the legs going down. So you can see I'm doing that curve forward, um, um, down. And the, one of the things about dogs is if you imagine that's their, their back, which isn't often straight, but then this is the head here. 
they've got these big barrel chests and then they get very, unless it's a fat dog, uh, it's got a big rib cage and then gets all thin at the back there. Mm. So drawing this line here is quite important to sort of making the, the, the dogginess of it. So I'm going to curve that one back in and I'm sort of describing that 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 mass of the, the rib cage in the middle there. Um, and he's putting his paws out, begging for some delicious, delicious treat. Um, I love it when dogs do that. That yeah. big, big stretch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll get the, please give me something eyes going on as well. And Dougie's got, there's quite dark eyes there and he's got that lovely patch. And he's got a bit of a big round snout. Um, and let's give him a a, a a big tongue coming out as well. <laughs> Not super accurate, but super cute. Lovely flappy ears. Um, and let's get his um, um, his Molnia. yep, helicopter tail going on. Great. <laughs> okay, happy with that one. All right, moving on. All right, I really like this one. There's a friend of mine, uh, Mariah, sent through um, uh, the classic cat in a box, um, uh, all curled up. Um, <laughs> as a child who was very excited about cardboard boxes in my youth, um, I I can sympathize. It's quite comforting being inside <laughs> that a cardboard super box. Super comfy. Yeah. Um, so I might just quickly sketch out my cardboard box here and see if I can fit a cat inside. Um, I like the words on the side of, of this cat box. It's like fantastic, <laughs> yeah, brilliant, you, uh, adorable, I was wondering, the cat's like, meow. Did, did cat stuff come inside this box? Surely, or is right? a box for a cat? Um, <laughs> maybe Boxes it's a custom cat box. Yeah. I don't know, I'll have to ask. Um, so... Draw the ears from above, and let's try and just get a little sleepy cat tucked away in there. So we've got about and... um, 20 minutes left today. Um, feel free to ask us questions as well about the about the process. Of course, we can just hang out and draw lots of pets and things like that. So don't feel like you have to. But if you do have any questions while we're going along about drawing or anything like that, Phil Hope's an expert, so um, you can ask here. Nice, safe space. No silly questions. Absolutely. Um, Okay. I like the perspective oh, of the the line drawing there and kind of bring yeah. everything in. It's like a vignette. <laughs> Just make sure it's correctly labeled before shipping, I'm assuming. <laughs> I think we're almost fully cats and dogs throughout the rest, but um, we've got some great ones. So um, let, let's try an extra extra shaggy one. We've we've been pretty conservative with our with our shagginess so far. Yeah. So this is a, um, a lovely dog. I don't know the name. Actually, I feel like a, I'm, I'm in one of those spy shows. I'll just zoom enhance. in and enhance. Dorothy. Hold on. Let me see if I can actually use some uh, photoshoppery. Um, to let's sharpen, let's use a smart sharpen filter. Enhance amount 199%. This isn't making any difference. I'm gonna say it's Digby. I'm gonna say it's Digby. Yeah, yeah, okay. Spy work done. All right, nice. so Digby Jake's dog. Well done, um, team. Oh, Jake's dog, that's my buddy. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. I was like, I know my 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 buddy Jake has a dog called Digby. Yeah, um, there you go. But yeah, it's from Jake. Shout out Jake to better. <laughs> he loves that dog. Uh, it's a lovely dog. So I'm just gonna loosely sketch out bits of Digby before I get stuck into it. Um, and he's got a lovely little pink tongue, and he's he's just such a furball that like I'm trying to sort of like establish a little bit of form before I start doing the fur just so it doesn't read as just a black squiggle. Um, and I might give him a sort of cartoonishly small body on Digby. Um, I 
Let's start putting a little bit of fur on him. Oh, he's got those fantastically wavy head ears. And it's not always there. I mean, it's one of those things that because I've got a, a puppy and I'm constantly trying to read, like, does he want to play? Does he need to go outside? All this yeah. kind of stuff. You, you spend a lot of time trying to read emotion into dogs. I think it's quite deceptive in that, like, you can cut, you, I think you have to tell them largely off their, their body movements, uh, if they're, they're happy or sad or what's going on with them. But with a drawing, you do end up sort of anthropomorphizing them a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to add sort of a subtle hint of a, an eyebrow um, and, and, and things like that, just to sort of give a little bit of a sense of this dog having some character that you can understand. So I'll turn up a little bit of the, um, uh, a little bit of um, the edges of the mouth. It's a tricky it's like thing. Like making though. a little bit like comic book, right? Like you know, you yeah. know, in comic book things aren't, you know, things aren't real. They're like kind of exaggerated or um, trying to. Yeah, you mentioned um, a big word, but I can't remember now. Um, but like human humanizing them a little bit, like adding human yeah. sort of features. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I watched a great video comparing um, uh, some of the sort of um, super realistic animal movies that have come out recently. So there was the Disney Lion King and there was one called Mowgli um, and there was the Jungle Book as well. There's been a few of these movies that are sort of like photorealist animals that, that people are animating. And it's a really interesting discussion about like how much you make them look like humans. Because if you suddenly give a dog sort of like full expression and control of their eyebrows and everything like that, it just looks weird. Right. Um, but if you have something that's entirely animal, it's quite hard to read them as a film. So it's like this really subtle art of sort of playing it in between where it's like, you can kind of imagine an animal making that expression, but it's not sort of completely out of the way human. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're cartooning, of course, you can do whatever you want. Get away with anything. Um, yeah. Um, so this just, is... Just Go checking ahead. in with chat just real quick while you set up the next one. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, yeah, so Festus was just saying, where's Johanna? Um, so yeah, Johanna's um, up at the design conference in, in Brisbane. Um, I may have mentioned that earlier at, at the beginning when my mic wasn't working. But uh, yeah, so she's spending some time there. Um, and Misty said, I can't believe how fast Bill is drawing these cute pets. Cool. Yeah, Bill's cool. speed is always <laughs> incredibly impressive. Very kind. Um, so this is a Lennox sent in by uh, Zoe. Um, the boxer? Um, who is a very, very cute. Yes, I, I have no idea. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say it's a boxer. And because it's such a great pose, I might just try and draw. And I'm, I'm not really familiar with how these dogs work. It's interesting just drawing it from the photo for the first time and sort of trying trying to sort of break down what's going to make it look like a boxer. So the main thing I'm seeing is the sort of triangular shape of that nose and the flat bottom to the, to, to the mouth. Um, and then I'm going to curve that, that sort of like archetypal sort of bit of mouth coming up, the bit of jaw coming up underneath the, 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 the flaps from the nose. And he's got this big, big wide nose like that. Uh, let's just draw a center line of his head. I'm gonna draw some, some big eyes in. And then again, he's got those really sort of sad puppy wrinkles that are so um, sort of um, representative of this, this, this kind of dog. And then he's got lots and lots of wrinkles on top of his nose where his snout sort of looks a little bit kind of pushed back or constricted in some ways. He's got this, that very cute underbite um, uh, on the, the, the dog. And then he's got those sort of sad floppy ears like this that are sort of flopping down over themselves. So the floppy ears is quite a, quite a dog trait, isn't it? I've heard you mention that a couple of times, like compared to the cat, the cats are kind of pointy and ready to roll. Most yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's it's another thing that you can kind of use that's, that's part of the anatomy of the dog, but you kind of read as being meaningful. So if you had like a really intense looking um, hunting dog, you might go with really pointy ears, like mm. it's very alert or something like that. Um, um, if I'm just roughly drawing in the, the character of it. But then if I wanted a really sort of dopey um, beagle having big, big floppy ears like this, or, or something might might be a, a a sort of nice way to represent the the, the character of that dog. So it, it's fun sort of thinking about how those things can be used. And even though 
we don't know. This dog could be a complete sook, and this one could be a killing machine. Um, right. we wanna, if we want to read it in that way, those those features kind of kind of help. Um, so I've got quite a lot of foreshortening because we're sort of looking down on this dog. So I'm just going to draw his, his his body in his one big circle underneath him, and we might just sort of put the paws right down the bottom, um, and just a little bit of leg coming out the side, maybe. I feel like I'm drawing sort of a version of Pig the Pug. Do you know those books? No, I don't. Pig the Pug. Pig the Pug, yeah. Um, it's a it's a series of children's books, which I think has been very, very successful. And when I moved to the mountains, I just by chance moved in two doors down from uh, the illustrator guy called uh, Aaron Blaby, who is... Um, oh, I do know this book. Yeah, probably Australia's most successful children's book illustrator right now, as mm. far as I know. He's, he's smashing it. So what, you just like moved into like the illustrator and author's crescent in the Blue Mountains when you moved over there? Uh, <laughs> not really, uh, because he, uh, I, I don't know how much to go into it, but we, we were renting a, a, a cheap house on a very fancy street and Aaron Aaron Blatley's doing doing quite well, so he lives on that street. No, 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 no other illustrators live on that street. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's the only one. <laughs> All bankers and people in finance and uh, lawyers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, they get to live on Aaron Blatley's street. Right. Um, um, all right. Well, I'm actually quite happy with how Lennox came out. It doesn't look entirely like Lennox, but I'm glad I got a bit of a sense of the uh, the the, um, the the breed there. Um, so I've got another one here. I'm not going to draw the full, um, I've just got a bit of a sort of profile shot, but I, I quite liked the look of this cat and it looks quite sophisticated with its flowers there. These were actually <laughs> sent to me from my primary school buddy, Alexis, um, on the central coast. Um, so shout out to Alexis for sending in, uh, her cat, cat, That's uh, cool. Yumi, which was very nice. It's funny when you see, you see pets, like someone else's pets, like, um, Steve's, Steve's cat looks a lot like a cat. Um, that I had for a long time as well. And you just, you, they, they look so similar sometimes. You're like, wow, that could yeah. totally be, um, totally be my cat. This looks very familiar to a cat I had uh, when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I quite like sort of the uh, classy look of this cat. So um, I'm going to give it some of those whiskers there. Give it those cat eyes again. So we've got 10, um, 10 minutes left, so I'll just mention again that uh, we will be back on, on Thursday. Um, same cat time, same cat channel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tw which is 12 o'clock on Thursday for us here. If, the, if you're in the US, it's uh, Wednesday afternoon. So just an hour an hour prior um, is when we'll be live again. And, um, you know, send through your submissions either through Discord. There's a link to our Discord uh, down in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, same thing. It's down on YouTube, down on, in the descriptions on YouTube. Or you can send them send them through to Bill, um, through his Instagram, however you like, and basically it's order of preference, right, Bill? Uh, yeah, start, sorry, well. order of uh, whatever sequential yeah. order. Whenever they come in, words are hard. Yeah. First in, <laughs> first in, um, best dressed. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, so oh, I'm cool. just going to put. I think this cat is so classy; it's going to get its own oh little frame, um, get hung up on the wall. It's going to have some little filigree in the corners of the frame. It's going to be a classy gold one. This is a snazzy cat. Um, okay. All good. So we, we've, we've made some good progress. Um, I don't think we're going to get to everyone, but again, we will be back on Thursday um, and um, we will um, hopefully, I think we'll get through all of them, all of them then, but let's see if we can get Oh, I loved this one. Um, this is another one from Instagram, which was um, uh, uh, Dana. But look at that cat. Look it already has a cheeky comic book kind of look. Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, if you can capture that, that's such a that's such a uh, fantastic that. expression that that cat's got in such a cute little face. Um, I think it's something about this eye on the right is is almost kind of like it's kind of winky. Yeah, um, totally. From a distance, particularly, like it looked like the cat was kind of. Yeah, yeah, he's giving you a sort of sneaky little look, and I think something about there's something about asymmetry in faces that 
it's like a single eyebrow raised or uh, a little bit of the mouth curved up gives it a sort of like almost like I think it because it's like you're trying to hide the expression that you're feeling it makes it look kind of like quirky or or sort of a bit sneaky or something so right. with the cat here you can just see a little bit of the left side of its mouth but it's got that little kink in the side like that uh, on that side of the mouth so um, um, I'll try and accentuate that a little bit um, let's just pop those those ears in on top um, and the, the, the lines of the face really contribute to that as well. So let's give him some little things there. So I'm just going to raise that eyelid a little bit underneath as well. And just going to put some little highlights in the eyes there as well. Okay, it's not exactly right, but I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. And I think because he's kind of like um, turned around to face us as well, um, um, that, that kind of adds to the effect a little bit. Yeah, the turnaround, turnaround look like over the almost not over the shoulder, but almost over the shoulder. Like yeah, 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 a little bit. Cool. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a very lazy trick to make it cuter. I'm just going to shrink the body down a little bit. <laughs> I love these little tricks. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the forehead and big head thing is really interesting. I've never, I've not heard that before. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Big head um, mode, DK mode. It's been turned on. <laughs> um, okay. How are we doing for time then? We've got five minutes left, buddy. Five minutes left. Okay. Let's try and do two, two more. I'm going to try and get just a, a couple wow. more in. So, um, I've got this one from, uh, an old high school friend of mine, actually, Mia, who sent through her cats. And it's got, she's got this white and black cat kind of hugging each other. Um, very, cute, very, very cute. So I might try and do a bit of um, Photoshop cheating with this one. Um, I'm going to try and sort of draw in just a silhouette of one of these cats. Um, so let's make this one the, 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 the white cat. Uh, so I'm going to really roughly knock in um, a silhouette for that. And I'm going to change its tail a little bit to make it like that. And it's got its arm going over. And then I'm going to grab that and copy it and paste it. And then I'm going to darken that layer to give us a black cat. I'm going to flip it over. Um, and then I might select the cat underneath it and let's erase our black cat on top. So they're holding each other like that. <laughs> um, it was like 30 seconds. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and then we'll put uh, some cute little cat features onto them. And then I might just do that kind of in reverse in white. Um, so I'm going very cartoony on these ones, but I'm kind of... I guess I'm looking at this as, as sort of a little design design jobby instead, and they've got yeah. a nice sort of symmetry about them. So I'm happy with that. That nice. was amazing. Cheers. Very impressed. What a, um, that's such a cool technique. Like I think for, for for people to try, like how quickly you could get like that that much that much down. It looks great. Like especially cheers. adding in like just erasing out just erasing out that little bit and putting them on top, and then I think using that like really textured brush helps a lot mm, as well. Mm. Like if you use yeah. just kind of regular brush, it might it, you might pick up the symmetry a lot more. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you, you're just trying to sort of like express as much of the, the features as you can in the silhouette. And something like that, where you got black cat, white cat, it sort of just lends itself to a sort of nice, mm. simple little little design. Um, okay, so we might just um, finish up with um, uh, a last one here. So I apologize, there's just three people that have missed out on, but but we'll, we'll get to you on Thursday. Yep. So this is my cousin's dog, actually. So my cousin Francis sent through um, this dog, which is uh, Maggie. Um, and maybe let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be controversial and change my brush. Um, Changing brush right at the end of the stream. Right at the end. You'll never see it coming. Um, and completely and, new technique and then changing your brush right at the end of the stream. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to try and uh, think this, this uh, something about this dog I'm, I'm, I think is going to be slightly challenging. So I'm just sort of 
doing some really loose quick sketching of, of where the what the dog's doing. Um, and I like that shape that it's got where it's got the, the big head. I think it's just sort of the angle that the photo has been take, taken at, but there's something about that that I quite like. Um, and let's put the, the, the paws coming out the front there. Are these Again, little dogs with these like kind of tough or like regal? Like yes. Puff, yeah, puff there is. Chest and yeah. It's funny because they're, 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 they're I'm sure their brains are the same as the my my dog's brain, which which kind of looks sort of like a teddy bear. But some of these dogs, you just sort of imbue them with this this sort of like regal kind of noble quality to them. Um, um, so uh, I might just quickly shade him in a little bit underneath. Again, I'm just sort of bashing out a bit of a silhouette. Um, and then lock in some little highlights for eyes. And those as well. And then I'll go back to my original brush. Um, just cool. to finish up. Okay, and uh, I think we're, we're, we're done. So thank you everyone for tuning in. It's been really fun um, drawing all, all your pets um, and we got quite a selection down. So that was great, thank you so much. That was awesome, Bill, like super, super impressive. Of course, lots of comments in there about like how quickly you can sketch these up and just make them look so realistic. Just pointing out that those two down the bottom were done like, oh, I'll just do these really quickly and they're like just incredible. So. Um, awesome. It's always a pleasure to 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 watch you work, and um, I'm sure there's lots of people very excited to see their their pets um, shown here. Maybe we'll grab this and throw it on Discord for them to have a look at as well. For sure, for sure. So if you want to check that out, um, and also Bill and I will be back um, same time uh, next Thursday. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, come in, um, hang out with us again, and we'll draw some cool animals. Okay, wonderful. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. See you then, Bill. <laughs> See you, Acorn. <laughs>